Hello, my name is Anna Kettle and this is one of a series of short films to show you how to do freehand parcheting. I'm going to show you a job that I did last summer freehand. Um, when I arrived on site, the wall had already been plastered and was, was tidy and flat and it was very well set. So I had to spray it down well and I had to make a good key into the surface. So I'll show you the procedure. Right, here I am on site. Um, I've got a, a tower scaffold and a very handy little chair with adjustable legs, which um, is designed for disabled people to use in showers. Um, but it does provide me to sit at the right height. Um, most of the plaster work has been done by plasterers in advance. So the um, parcheting to the left is by the original plasterers and they have um, left me a panel with a border and it's all well set. So here I am uh, making it damp because, because it's well set. There's not much moisture in the background and it will stop the, the plaster uh, drying out and, and um, turning to dust before it gets a chance to set. This is July and it's warm, so it needs lots of spraying. And then here I am with the um, design which I've done in advance um, for the uh, client's approval. And of course, it's decided to become windy when, I decide, when I'm cutting it out and... Here, there, I've got the parget. Put it to one side. Um, it's, I think that was at half scale dimensions. So I need to grid up the surface and I've put a grid on the drawing and then I will be able to transfer the image from the drawing. Here we go. And I'm just marking it out. It doesn't have to be perfect because as you're building up the parger, you can modify it, but it gives a good idea of, of um, the proportion and, and layout. I find it very difficult to do that um, directly onto the wall. I find it a lot more satisfactory if I plan that sort of thing in advance and I can look, look at it from a distance and, uh, and think about it. So here we are, nearly finished. So this is a parger of a hair running through some plant life. So I've got two things I've got to do next. Um, one is to dampen down the surface again so because I've you have to keep repeat damping when, when the, the plaster the wall, is already well set. Perfect. So really the water gets a chance so to really soak in. in the right but first I'm about to drill into the surface because I want to get a really good key between the foreground and the background. So the next thing and I have to do is You see how when I was looking at the background area, it's flat, it's already set. So all I need to do is key the area areas so where my parchment will be and neat. the background will be the same background as the rest of the building. I'm using a 10 millimeter drill to do this. Um, and it's tedious work, but there we go. It's done now. And I can then spray it down again. And I want to get moisture really well into those holes that I've made and uh, and help damp down the area. You, I've now damped it down three times perhaps and here I am starting the pargeting. I'm using a spatula which I had made for me. It's a very rigid spatula that's its main feature and I also use my fingers and I wear gloves because the, the plaster is quite uh, caustic, not very caustic, but enough that I think wearing gloves is good. I'm now building up the area. Um, it's about maybe 40 millimetres deep there. And that's about the maximum that you can build up before you have to put some supporting structures in of metal. After the plaster has gone on, then you can consolidate it because as the water goes out of it, it gets air into it and you consolidate it down to, to remove the air. And that's something which you do sort of going back over it several times. So, and it depends very much on how warm it is as to how often you have to do that. So you, you, you keep checking back and when it gets a bit of firmness to it, then you can consolidate a little bit and then, no, then you've got to leave a bit. 
and you add some more new plaster in. And, and over the day, you'll be going forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards, gradually consolidating it as it sets up. The bit I'm doing here are some little dots. Now, I thought they were a great idea when I did the design, but if you look at old Paget, little dots like this are one of the things that falls off most often. So it's really important to um, work them well into the surface. So dig the plaster into the hole well and can make sure it's a, a hemisphere dot, not a full circle. And here I can do a little bit more making good back to that area. You can see the, the uh, leaf right to the left has got quite a crisp edge to it now. That's, that's setting up nicely. I use my fingers quite a lot, which is another re good reason to wear gloves. And I'm using a smaller spatula now just to get the detail. Um, both of these spatulas I, I had made for me by a blacksmith. Um, the first ones I got in Venice, the traditional Stucco spatulas. And then I took them along to a, a very good blacksmith I know and said, could you copy them? And so I have several. The important thing about the spatula is it must be rigid. And uh, so, I don't know, he made them out of steel, but what sort of steel was, is not in my knowledge, really. But they work very well. You can see I'm sort of smoothing the surface and consolidating it down, pushing it down, filling in any gaps that there might be. Oh, I've found a little bit of where well, there's far too much hair. So I'll just have to get rid of that because uh, that's just a clump of hair. Yeah, looks like I'm going to have to replace that little bit altogether. I went and stood down um, on the ground behind the scaffold and I, I realised there wasn't really enough detail on that Paget. So uh, I'm putting a, an incised line into each of the, there we are, I'm putting one in there, an incised line into the, um, the sort of uh, fruity bit to give it a bit more detail. And that's the sort of thing that gradually you work through. Another thing you have to think about when you're building up the Paget is you don't want to get areas where water might sit and puddle. The whole idea is if it gets wet, that the water could just sort of run off nicely. It doesn't tend to be too much of a problem, but you need to sort of check over the Paget, maybe as you go along or maybe when you finish to make sure there's no puddling areas or just in behind where the spatula is now that you could get water go into a little hole there and, and then that might get left there. And the trouble with water is if it then freezes, then it will blow the plaster because it expands when it freezes. So you, you need to spend a bit of time making sure the bond between your new Paget and the Paget behind is complete with no little gaps. Now it's set up quite a lot now, so I'm, I'm getting to the finishing surface. Um, now by this stage, I'm not moving the body of the Paget at all. Um, I'm moving just the surface and getting a smooth and, and clean finish with no spatula marks and no finger marks in it. And, and a damp brush helps me to do that. There we are. That's all starting to look not quite neat and tidy. And that whole leaf and fruit structure is very nearly finished. Um, looking at it now, I can see that the central line is a bit wavy. So I shall probably come along later and smooth it off, make it more continuous.